not a people person. I've had more jobs than I can count on two hands at this point, and I have yet to find one that suits me. Someone in my position, with no college education and no real-world skills, really struggles to find and then keep a job. Every customer service job I've had has ended in a very ugly fashion. One time, a couple of years ago, I was even arrested and escorted off the property of the store that I worked at because I may have accidentally threatened a customer. In my defense, he called me something he shouldn't have and I may have said some things. That was a long time ago though and I'd like to tell you that I changed, but sadly, I'm still the same old me. Closing in on 30 years old in a few months and I decided I need to do something with my life. And that led me ultimately to the best decision I had ever made in a long time, and that's going back to school. I'm studying computer science online and I'm loving it. What I love most about it though is that my human contact is limited. What I realized quickly is that school was outrageously expensive and I was just about out of money. As a result of my record in previous employment history, I was really struggling this time around to find a job. Finally, I found a pizza place near my house that was hiring a delivery driver. I figured since human interaction would be limited, what could go wrong? Clearly, quite a bit as it seems. The first few weeks were fine. I delivered a lot of pizzas and barely said two words to any of the folks who ordered them. A huge amount of people actually requested for me to just leave the pizza at the doorstep, which was even more ideal. But then I met Deanna. Oh, sweet Deanna. Apparently, the people at the shop knew this woman, and she was a terror, I guess. She would always order the pizza with this weird special instructions that honestly made no sense. If anybody has ever worked in a service job, you know what I mean when people ask for the stupidest things. My supervisor that night, who happened to be the owner's son, thought it would be funny to let me deliver the pizza to Deanna, considering my track record with fellow humans. I didn't know prior to delivering that I was headed for sweet Deanna's house, and I pulled into the driveway, and this frantic middle-aged woman ran out of the house in a robe and curlers in her hair, I kid you not. She was waving her arms in the air and screaming at me, saying, Are you insane? Get out of my driveway! That's for owners of the house only! Don't make me call the police! I could already feel my heart pumping. Now in a calm voice, especially for me, I said to Deanna, Ma'am, I just have your pizza. You just want me to drop it here or what? The woman screamed at the top of her lungs and then shouted at me again, saying, I won't ask you again! Move your car! Now, a few years ago, I would have probably thrown the pizza at the lady, but somehow I had the patience to get back into my car and move to the road. I got out and started my way up the driveway. I extended the pizza out, trying to hand it to her, but she stared at me like I was holding a dead body or something. Annoyed, I said, You gonna take your pizza? Deanna stared at me. Her mouth was half open and her eyes looked enraged. In an instant, her eyes bulged open and she said, This is all wrong. This is wrong. How dare you? I was beyond confused at this point. I basically was done with this and said whatever. I set the pizza down gently in the driveway and started walking back to my car. I'm a big guy and this was a smaller woman so I was shocked when the next thing I know, the woman jumped on my back and started to beat on the back of my head like some type of drum. While she was hitting me, she continued to yell, It's all wrong! It's not even the right box! I couldn't even begin to understand what she was talking about. Was she mad that the pizza was in a different box? I finally was able to gently lift her off of me and set her down. I was annoyed and increasingly angry, but the last thing I wanted to do was hurt this poor woman accidentally. I got to my car and when I looked up, the woman was running at my car with a knife in her hand. And that was the final straw for me. I peeled off and looked in my rearview mirror to see her standing at the end of the driveway, waving the knife in the air like it was a flag or something. I didn't call the cops, and trust me, I know that that was stupid, considering this woman legitimately threatened me. But I was scared to get in trouble. I've had a lot of issues in the past with the law, and nine times out of ten, I'm the one to blame. I just feared that in case the system failed, I didn't want to jeopardize the only good thing I have going on in my life, and that's school, and sort of this job. I didn't tell the guys at the shop exactly what happened, I just told them to never ever make me deliver there again. 
The more time that passes, the more I'm thankful to be alive. I have no idea where she pulled the knife from. This woman was hanging on my back and I couldn't see her at one point. If she had decided to pull that out then, I may not be writing this today. Life is weird, my friends, and crazy stuff happens all the time, especially when you least expect it. When you really break it down, the thought of someone delivering you food is objectively an unnerving thing. Now think about it for one second. A complete stranger is preparing your food, another complete stranger is driving to your location, and then you have an interaction with this stranger who is standing one foot away from you. What's even more unnerving is when this happens and you didn't even order food. About five years ago, I was dog-sitting for my old roommate. I didn't mind at all since I figured I would just stay at his house. I lived there for two years, so I didn't feel strange or anything like that, and he had the dog when I used to live there, so I already had a great relationship with the pup. In my mind, this was going to be an easy endeavor. His dog was basically the easiest dog in the world to take care of. I swear that she was part cat or something. He could fill up her food bowl once, and she would eat it throughout the day. Most dogs I've seen just go nuts when their bowl gets filled, but not this pup. She never barked, and she went out twice a day and did her business. At that point in my life, I was also just really looking for some space and time alone since I was nearing the end of a long-term relationship. I figured the space is just what I needed for a few days to clear my head. His house was beautiful. He had a finished basement with a cartoonishly large fireplace next to a massive TV. I figured I would post up down there for the few days that I was watching the house. My job was boring at the time and it could be done from my computer at home. So I set up my laptop, grabbed some snacks, and basically lived in the basement for a few days with the pup. On Friday night, I was feeling a little lonely since I had been there since Wednesday and I hadn't left the house yet or really seen anybody. I called a couple of buddies over to watch some college basketball and just hang out for the night. We ordered pizza and wings at around 7.30pm and it was delicious. However, this is not where my unfortunate story takes place. My friends left at around midnight and I cleaned up a bit and then decided to get ready for bed. Once I lay on the couch, I ended up pulling up my laptop and starting some work just because I wasn't really tired yet. A little after 1am, I thought I heard the doorbell through my headphones. I put my headphones down and sat still for a moment with my heart beginning to race. When nearly a minute went by and I heard nothing, I felt much better. I figured that it must have been a noise or something in the music that I was listening to that sounded like a doorbell. But then, I heard it again, clear as day, a doorbell. Now being in the basement, I had the slight advantage of seeing the driveway. The window sat just above my head, but if I stood on the tip of my toes, I could see the driveway. So to my surprise, more than my horror, there was a car running in the driveway with the headlights beaming. I couldn't tell what type of car it was from where I was standing because of the bright headlights. My first thought was one of my friends that were there earlier had come back. I thought that maybe they forgot their phone or something and that's why they showed up. I went upstairs and approached the door cautiously. I had all the lights off upstairs and only had the outdoor light above the front door on. As I got closer to the door I couldn't make out the details of the person on the doorstep. They seemed to have a hood on and then another brown jacket over the hood. When I got to the door, I cracked it open. Thankfully, there was another screen door in front of that door that was also locked. Can I help you with something? I said with some reluctance in my voice. The person grabbed the handle on the screen door and noticed it was locked and took a slight step back. At that moment, I didn't even look at that as alarming. It just happened so quickly that I figured it was an instinct to open the door on his part. He made a small grunting noise, I guess, and then said in an almost shy voice, Hey, I... I got your small pizza and wings. He then held up a brown paper bag that was rolled up at the top. I was still trying to make out the details of his face, but he kept his head down at a downward angle. In a very annoyed voice, I said, It's one o'clock in the morning. I didn't order a pizza. The guy looked around nervously and then back at me and said, yeah, yeah you did. This is the address I have the order for. 
Then he continued to repeat the address back to me, which was in fact the address of the house that I was staying at. But I slammed the door in the guy's face and shouted, Well, you guys got the wrong address. Good night. I made my way back to the basement, and I was incredibly annoyed at this point. Just as I sat down on the couch, the doorbell rang again. I went back to the window and saw that the guy's car was still there. Thankfully, the dog slept through all this doorbell nonsense so I didn't have to deal with the barking dog in addition to everything else going on. I called my friends and asked if they had played some joke on me since I was going to be home alone in the house, and all my friends that were over were already home and in bed. It's also worth noting my friends are not the type of people to really pull jokes like that, especially one as elaborate as this. Then I tried calling the pizza shop that we ordered from earlier. Maybe something weird happened in the system and they accidentally put down my address for another order, but when I looked up the number online, they had closed at 10pm, so it wasn't that pizza shop. It had only been around two minutes since I looked out the window, but the car was still there, and then the doorbell rang one last time. I contemplated going upstairs again, but I noticed the delivery guy was finally walking back to his car. The relief didn't last long though. He got into the car, turned it off, and then just sat in it. He didn't leave, and he appeared to be on the phone. I was hoping that maybe he really was a pizza guy and they just had the wrong address and he was talking to his boss or something. Don't call me crazy, but I don't think I ever met a delivery guy that was this persistent. I tried to make out the license plate number, but the number was faded out a bit. I know it just started with JC, but that's all I could see. Finally, he backed out of the driveway and drove off. I was slightly concerned though, because he drove off very slowly and didn't turn on his lights. He just sort of rolled away in the car. I figured this uncomfortable ordeal was finally over and I was not in the mindset to work anymore, so I figured that I would finally try and just sleep. I turned off the TV and sat listening to some music in front of a low-lit fire. In between songs, I thought I heard a car engine. I got off the couch and looked out the window and there was the same car again, this time parked in front of the house with no headlights. I snuck upstairs to the owner's bedroom to see if I could get a better look. I'm not sure if he noticed me, but then he drove off again. I hid behind the curtain and looked out the window for the next half hour and the car kept driving by every few minutes. I was scared at this point because I knew something just wasn't right. I grabbed the dog and my laptop and locked the bedroom door upstairs. I was paranoid but I felt safer doing this. Shortly after 2.30am, the doorbell rang again. I looked out the window and saw no car this time. Then I heard a bunch of knocks at the door and then that same voice from earlier loudly said, I have your pizza. I have your delivery, sir. Your food's getting cold. I sat quietly and didn't do or say anything. I should have called the police right there and then, or at least told the guy that I was calling the cops. But it wasn't my house and I had never called the police before, so I was just not thinking straight. Then the knock stopped. I didn't hear the voice anymore and I didn't see the car. It was as quiet as could be, and I sat and stared at the ceiling all night until the sun came up. I fed the dog and let her out in the backyard quickly. I looked around for a few minutes that we were outside and then ran back into the house. I made sure she was okay and then I decided I was going to leave. He was going to be back later that night from his trip and I didn't want to stay in that house for another minute. When I left, I nearly tripped walking out the front door. A rolled up paper bag was on the front steps. I opened it and it just had an empty container that you put wings in sitting at the bottom of the bag. I felt sick as the thoughts flooded into my head, thinking about everything that could have happened. I drove away and as I got to the end of the street I saw what I thought may have been the car from the previous night. It was a dark sedan with a license plate that started with JC. I called the owner of the house right away and he didn't seem too concerned at all so we just kind of discussed it for a little while and I left it at that. Nothing ever happened again regarding that incident. I asked my friend countless times if anyone had ever showed up to his house since that night and he said never once has he ever experienced anything like that. I have no idea what happened or what kind of danger I was truly in. It was the most uncomfortable and frightening night of my life. I know it may be irrational but I have yet to order pizza or any other kind of food since.
A few years ago, I was able to open an awesome pizza shop with my brother. The business was great and we worked well together. My brother and I cooked the pizza and wings and our wives took the orders and operated the cash register. We would usually hire college kids to deliver the food for us and we could focus on the pizza and running the shop. We had a lot of turnover with the delivery drivers because it's not a glamorous job. Where I live, we get a lot of snow and nobody wants to drive and deliver pizzas in the snow. On top of the tips, I paid my drivers well, more than any other pizza place would pay a driver. My only condition was, please tell me when you're going to quit so I can make arrangements. Now this worked for a while and honestly still works today. The only thing I was not prepared for though, was my driver calling in for a shift. It was a Saturday night and it was busy of course. My brother was out of work for a month for some minor surgery that he had had so I was insanely busy. My driver called in and said that he was sick, which I can't really question. I was able to get a friend to come in and help me, but he didn't have a license, so I had to deliver the pizzas while he cooked, and my wife answered the phones. Everything seemed to be going smoothly, stressful of course, but smooth. I was making my last run of deliveries for the evening when I pulled up to a house that was having a loud party. I walked up to the door with three pizzas, and two young ladies answered the door. It was clear that they were college girls and they definitely had a little too much to drink, but it's a college town and I'm not one to judge. I gave them the pizzas and as she was trying to pull money out to tip me, I saw my delivery driver that called in standing in the room behind the girl. Without thinking, I shouted, David, what are you doing? He turned around and saw me and then just ran as if I was going to chase him or something. No, I was angry, but I wasn't so mad that I was going to chase the poor kid. The two girls looked confused, and I made a joke and told the girls that if they see David, give him a nice kick for me. I was mad at the situation, but I understand. As I said, it's a college town, and I know these kids just want to hang out and have a good time. I probably would have busted his chops about it, but I wouldn't have been that mad. I'm just not that kind of boss. And that night, I told my wife about seeing David and... She just had the same reaction as me. She called him some ridiculous name I can't remember and we kind of just shared a laugh about the situation. We had a couple of drinks to cap off the night and then got into bed at around 1am. I hadn't fallen completely asleep yet when I thought I heard a noise from outside the window. We live in a one story ranch house so you could be standing right outside my bedroom window. It sounded like something bumping and tapping the window. I woke up to my wife and asked if she heard it as well, and she did. After a brief deliberation, she told me to move to the curtain and see if someone was there. My logical brain told me that there wasn't, but something did feel wrong. I whipped back the curtain, and to my relief, there was nothing there. I thought I could make out the smudge of some sort of fingerprints on the glass, but I was sure that it was my mind playing tricks on me. We both rolled over to go back to sleep, but... I wanted a drink of water before bed. I made my way to the kitchen and that's when I saw someone trying to break into the sliding glass door in my kitchen. I immediately jumped to the side in hopes that the darkness would shade me. My phone was next to the bed so I couldn't call the police and I was too scared to move. You can't even imagine how scary it is to see a figure actively trying to open your door in the middle of the night. I have chills now just writing this and reliving that memory. I finally worked up the courage to run back into the bedroom and I called the police right away. My wife jumped right up and I told her to hide in the closet. I grabbed my left-handed driver from the golf bag and slowly made my way down the hall again. The figure was now trying to open the window above the sink and he was succeeding. The window was small but it was budging, unlike all the other windows and doors. Once he got the windows open almost all the way, he looked up and we made eye contact for the first time. It was my delivery driver, David. I gasped his name and stared in disbelief as the kid stared at me from the window above my sink. He turned white as a ghost and instead of continuing to try and climb through the window, he just jumped back and ran away. I stupidly tried to call him but his phone was going right to voicemail. The cops showed up several minutes later and I decided on something that most people probably would not have. I did not give the cops David's name. I told them I saw an intruder breaking in and he ran when he saw me. I gave a statement and they left. I never saw David again. 
He never showed up at the shop, and he never showed back up at my house. Maybe once he realized the cops weren't coming after him, he figured I didn't report him. Or maybe he had too much to drink that night and he wasn't thinking straight. Either way, kids make mistakes, and I just hope wherever David is today, he's doing all right. At the time, I didn't have any children yet, because if I did, that ending may have played out a little differently. I have no idea what David intended on doing that night, whether he just wanted to rob my house or actually cause us harm. I'm thankful that he found some sense in that moment and actually ran away. I know we caught him out that night with his friends and he was just kind of faded I guess from drinking but I really held no ill will towards him so the fact that he ended up in my house and tried to break in, I don't know whether it was coincidence or he truly had some sort of ill intent. But David if you're still out there, I sincerely hope that you're okay. This story took place about six to seven years ago when I was dating my college girlfriend. We were staying at her parents' house while they were out of town for a business conference in Phoenix. She had a lot of pets that needed to be taken care of, a bunch of fish, and a few guinea pigs and a rabbit. I never realized how much work some of them were, cutting up lettuce, cleaning cages, and whatever else went into the maintenance. Anyway, the night started out like any other. We were just watching TV. Actually, I think we were watching the Disney movie Heavyweights, if any of you are familiar with that movie. There is a scene where the entire camp absolutely pigs out in junk food. Once I saw the pizza, I knew that's what I wanted for dinner. Not good pizza, though. I was in the mood for Papa John's. I love their plain breadsticks and all the different sauces that come with them, and for some reason, that's what I was in the mood for. My girlfriend begrudgingly agreed, but asked if we could pick it up instead of being delivered. After I took a look outside, I told her that we should just have it delivered as the weather was getting really nasty out. It was a mixture of sleet, snow, and rain. She agreed but asked if I would call in the order and I didn't mind. I called in and paid with a tip included so they could just leave it at the door. They said it would take around half an hour or 45 minutes to deliver, which seemed reasonable to me. But after an hour and a half, I was starting to get hungry. I knew the roads were wet and honestly felt kind of bad for ordering it, as her parents' house was probably a good 7-8 miles away from the pizza place. Just as I was beginning to give up on the fact that food would never arrive, I saw headlights pulling up the long driveway. But as the vehicle got closer to the house, the lights stayed on with no movement. No one got in or out of the car, it was just parked there for a good 5 minutes. I opened up the door and waved them on trying to acknowledge that this was the right place. Still, no movement as the headlights glared right at my face. Then suddenly the headlights went off, but the car wasn't moving closer to the house, it was moving further away. The car was backing up down the driveway and heading towards the road. I was both confused and increasingly hangry. I called the shop and asked for the status of the delivery and if I should cancel due to the weather. They told me that the delivery driver should have been there as they left a while ago. My girlfriend also seemed overly concerned or anxious about the whole situation. I told her it wasn't a big deal and if worse came to worse, we well, could just make a sandwich or something. Still, I could tell something was wrong and that her mood had suddenly shifted. I tried to brush it off and not pry, and as soon as we pressed play on the TV, we heard a huge bang at the door. It was like someone was pounding on it as hard as they could. We both jumped up, eyes darting toward the door. I told her to stay behind the couch and just let me go check. I told her that I'm sure that it was just the delivery guy leaving the food at the door. And I was right. The food was sitting on the porch and I didn't see a sign of a person or vehicle which I thought was peculiar. I brought the food inside and locked the door, then put it on the counter so we could start eating. When I opened the breadstick box, there was a napkin inside that looked like it had been written on with red pen. It said, I hope you enjoy, XOXO. I showed my girlfriend and her face turned white. I asked her what was going on and why she was acting weird. She then said that one of her exes, Sean, used to work at Papa John's or maybe still did. She didn't want to make a big deal of it as she was sure that it would be a non-issue, but she said that she thought the car that had pulled into the driveway earlier looked like his old car at least the one that she remembered from when they were dating. 
but she said that he always used to leave her notes that had XO, XO at the bottom. Even after they broke up, she said that he would leave them on her car. She said that when she decided to leave him, he didn't take it well and began contacting her non-stop trying to get back together and mailing and leaving her letters. She said that after she changed her number and made her social media accounts private, she never heard from him again and never had any further issues. I really didn't know what to say. I wanted to say I'm sure this one was a big coincidence, but I didn't know if it was or wasn't. I told her that anybody that was here is now gone as I didn't see a person or car outside. I told her that we should skip dinner and go to bed if she wanted, but she said she was fine and that we should eat. About 15 to 20 minutes after we got done eating, we heard another loud crash coming from outside. It sounded like glass or ice had been hurled against the sliding glass doors in the kitchen. Again, I told her to stay in the living room while I went to check it out. The motion sensor was activated in the backyard, but I didn't see anyone or anything. I didn't see anything that could have hit the glass. Nothing was broken that I could see. I asked if she wanted me to call the police, and she was reluctant. One of her parents would have to be notified, and she said she really didn't have any proof that someone was there. We decided to call it an early night and try to get some sleep. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to sleep much. My anxiety was definitely going to keep me up most of the night. Thankfully, the remainder of the night was uneventful. It was 3 a.m. and we hadn't heard or seen anything else. However, to this day I swear that I heard scratching and whispering from 3 a.m. on to the morning. I felt like someone was outside the window, but every time I shifted the blinds to look, nothing was there. In the morning, I chalked it up to the animals making noise, maybe to make myself believe or feel better about the situation from the night before. To my knowledge, nothing else came from the incident, and my girlfriend at the time never had another weird occurrence. We broke up a few years later, but almost every single time I order pizza, I think about that night, and I half expect there to be a note in my pizza box. Most people out there have experienced some sort of heartbreak and everybody deals with this crisis differently and in their own way. For me, it was a pizza and shamefully tinder, both of which usually left me feeling like a truck hit me. After a few, let's call them tinder dates, I decided that I was done with tinder, at least for a while. Things get weird and almost scary sometimes. I decided that the best way to deal with this loneliness was to order an amazing loaded french fry pizza. I'll say this, if you've never experienced the glorious bounty of a loaded french fry pizza, you need to change that immediately. I ordered my pizza, and about 45 minutes later the doorbell rang. It was a beautiful woman delivering my pizza as well. I know anybody can deliver a food, but I personally have never seen a woman so gorgeous delivering pizza at that time. I made some stupid jokes when I answered the door, and she giggled. I figured it was now or never to make a move. Strike while the iron's hot, I suppose. So, I just asked if she wanted to hang out, and to my surprise, she said that when she was done with work after this delivery that she'd love to chill. I was pumped, and perhaps more pumped than my pizza. She said she needed to go home and freshen up, and then she would head over at around 10pm. We exchanged numbers, and I decided that I probably should freshen up myself. 10 o'clock came, and she never showed up. I waited a bit, and then finally texted her and asked her where she was. I never received a text back until about 11.15. I was angry at this point, but as soon as she said she was coming over, I forgot how angry I was and agreed to still let her come. Before I knew it, it was midnight and she still wasn't there. I finally started listening to my brain for once and I decided to text her and tell her not to come. She texted back and claimed that she was almost there and that she really wanted to hang out. I was upset and decided that it would probably be like all my other Tinder dates if I let her come over, so I stuck to my guns and told her that I wanted to pass out for tonight and that maybe we can hang out again in the future. She responded with a simple text that was just a laughing face emoji. A weird response, I thought, but I shrugged it off and decided to go to bed. I had no idea what time it was, but it was at some point in the middle of the night I was awoken by my doorbell. I cautiously made my way to the door and there was nobody there. Directly behind the front door is my living room, and in the living room is a back door that leads to my backyard. 
As I was staring out the front door, I thought I caught movement out of the corner of my eye. I turned around and I swore that I saw someone running by my back door. I snuck over to that door and I thought I could hear giggles and whispers through the door. I couldn't make out any words and I guess it could have been the wind, but it definitely sounded like voices. A few moments later, my worst fears came true. While I was sitting next to the back door, I looked up across the room at the front door and at the door were what I believed to be five people. Whoever was standing in front then started to ring the doorbell repeatedly. I yelled from the other side of the room, What do you want? They stopped at the doorbell and then a deep, burly voice responded, We want to hang out. Don't you want to hang out? I shouted back a threat that I was going to call the police, but I had no intention of calling them if the threat worked. And then I heard a bubbly female voice shouting, They would never get here in time. Now the panic started to take me over. I ran back to my room and grabbed my phone to call the police. The entire time I was in my room, they kept ringing my doorbell and banging on the door. I half expected them to break the door down at any point. About five minutes later, I could see the lights of the cop car shining through my window and I ran back to the living room. The group of people was gone and I let the cops inside so I could give a statement. I told them about the girl at the pizza shop and that I was sure that it was her and most likely her friends. The cops didn't seem too interested if I'm being honest. They asked if I had seen any cars either when the woman delivered my pizza or when I had the alleged intruders and sadly, I didn't see the car either time. They asked if I had any proof that it was this girl and of course, I didn't. I didn't even know the girl's name. She was listed as pizza girl on my phone. Unfortunately, you can't charge someone based on feeling. I tried texting her that night and she responded right away, indicating me that she was awake and she claimed that I was insane. She could be right, and I was unfortunately just targeted by a group of freaks that night and this poor girl was just caught in the crossfire, but I don't think so. Everything just seemed off from the beginning. She agreed to hang out with a stranger after delivering a pizza, yes, more weird things have happened, but it does raise a red flag. Claiming she would be over at 10 and... Then she just kept postponing, saying that she was almost there. Then the weird laughing text, and then the intruders saying things like, do I want to hang out? It just seemed weird and oddly suspicious. Nothing has ever happened since that night, but I can tell you for sure that I don't sleep well anymore, and I have yet to order any pizzas since that night. I still have her number on my phone, and maybe now that I've written this story, I'll text the pizza girl and see if she wants to hang out. Click the join button to become a member today for exclusive content. Last month, the strangest and most unsettling thing happened to me while I was delivering a pizza. I started this gig delivering pizzas about six months ago to make some extra cash on the weekends. I'll say this, anybody looking for some extra money should consider delivering pizzas. I know it's not glamorous, but depending on where you work, you can make some decent side money. For the most part, I never really had any interesting stories about delivery. I've heard people describe all sorts of things from their experiences. Everything from being invited inside to a party, to someone I used to work with being invited inside after dropping off the pizza and six months later he ended up marrying that woman. But for me, it was always the status quo until a month ago. In the area I deliver, there aren't too many apartment buildings. It's mostly residential neighborhoods and just a few business parks. However, there is a massively large apartment building within our delivery area. The apartments are new, but the building itself is quite old. In the early 1900s, the building was some sort of warehouse or factory. I think they made candles or something random like that, but it mostly had been abandoned for the last 40 years. Now just recently, they renovated the entire building and made these beautiful apartments. They're open and spacious floor plans, and because the warehouse was huge, they were able to add a ton of apartments. I think the cheapest apartment in the entire building is 2100 for one bedroom. Basically, you need to have some money to afford one of these apartments. When Saturday night came, and I received a call to deliver a pizza to this building, I was pumped to see it for myself. I had only seen photos up to this point. 
Ordinarily, I don't love delivering to apartments. It's not the apartment's fault, it's just sometimes it can be annoying trying to navigate which building is the correct one, especially when it's dark out. But not this time. This time, I was excited to deliver to these apartments and selfishly, I was hoping to get a nice tip. The drive should have taken me about 10 minutes, but it ended up being almost 20 minutes due to the horrific weather. It was raining and storming so badly outside that the visibility was almost non-existent. When I arrived at the massive building, I pushed the button for the address of the pizza. They unlocked the door and I stood in the lobby-like room. There were two elevators, one to my left and one to my right. At the end of the room, straight across from me, was another door that led to the stairs. I don't love elevators, so I decided to take the stairs, even though it was on the sixth floor. I got to the floor and started making my way down the confusing corridors. It was like a maze on the floor. I assumed the floor was a giant square with rooms all the way around, but it had a lot of turns that honestly blew my mind. From the outside of the building, it was just a giant rectangle, but inside was like something out of an abstract painting. I was briskly walking down the hall, looking at all the numbers trying to find the address of my delivery. Then, without notice, the power went out. It was completely dark where I was standing. Of course, my cell phone was outside in the car, so I didn't have any light on me. The hallway was completely blacked out. I had no idea where I was and how far away the stairs were. It was as if I entered a funhouse. I tried to use one hand to guide myself on the wall and the other hand was firmly holding the pizza and wings. If you're afraid of the dark, then this would have been enough to do you in, but unfortunately, it gets worse. In my dwindling composure, I heard a door open slowly and then close abruptly. It sounded close in front of me, but I literally saw nothing. If someone left their apartment, they weren't using a light to navigate. So I had thought, that was probably whoever ordered the pizza and they were just checking to see if it was at their door. I decided to shout, Hey, I got your pizza. A brief silence ensued and then a voice emerged from the darkness that had to be no more than ten feet away and said in a low and raspy voice, I didn't order pizza. I stayed quiet and stopped moving. I wanted to turn around and go back to the stairs, but at this point, I had already walked by a ton of doors, and I wouldn't know which one was the stairs. As I stood still, hoping that the power would turn on, the voice emerged again, this time right in front of me. I could feel the heat of the breath on my skin, and they said, You're coming with me. Thankfully, I was holding the pizza because this person tried to grab me, but they ended up grabbing the pizza box. I threw the box, turned, and ran back the way I came. I don't know why I wasn't yelling for help. I think I was paranoid to give away my position. As I ran down the blacked out hall, I tried every doorknob I passed until I found one that wasn't locked, and thankfully it was the stairs. The stairs had these emergency lights, so I was able to faintly see where I was going. I ran outside, got into my car, and drove back to the pizza shop in the rain. I told my boss everything, and we decided to call the police. The person who ordered the pizza called furious that their order was thrown out in the hallway, but I didn't care. I gave my statement to the police who informed the apartment management, but as of writing this a month later, nothing has happened. I did find out that the floor I was on was also supposed to have these working emergency lights, but for some reason, they didn't operate. I'm still not sure if this was some cruel joke to play on someone in the dark or if this strange person intended to harm me. Either way, I'm thankful my pizza box saved my life that night and at this point, I'm just happy I have an insane delivery story I can finally share. If anything happens, I will for sure write up follow-ups, but at the moment, there is a demented man in the darkness just waiting to strike. My mid-twenties was a rough time in my life. I was fired from the job that I secured right out of college and wasn't able to afford my rent, so I moved home with my parents. I was slightly depressed and I didn't even want to contemplate a new career choice yet. When I was only 22 years old, I was on pace to make 100 k a year, and that number could only grow, and by the time I was 25, I couldn't find a job anywhere. The most unfortunate thing about my whole situation was that I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that's what got me fired. 
The company that I worked for didn't ask questions and just let me go. To make a long and painful story short, a co-worker whom I considered a mentor and a friend had gotten into some real bad and illegal stuff. He started to bring that stuff into the office where we worked. I tried talking to him and it went nowhere as you may expect. At one point during the day I saw him go to the restroom and I knew exactly what was going on. I went into the restroom to try and stop him or at least try and communicate with him but I didn't get very far. The company must have known that he was up to something and they were watching him. As soon as I went into the bathroom, not two minutes later did the owner and security barge in and escort us both out of the building. I tried for months to plead for my job back, but it went nowhere. The cameras only picked me up, whispering to him, and I must admit, it does look sketchy. When I was 25, I decided it was time to get on my feet and at least try to make something out of my life. One of my buddies from high school worked at a pizza shop in my hometown that his family owned. It wasn't glorious, but I needed money badly. Anything to make ends meet. I did this for a little while, and I was shocked at how much money I was making in tips. I always thought working at night would be better, but delivering pizza to businesses during the lunch rush always produced a substantial number of tips. One late afternoon when I was about to call it quits for the day, I heard a minor argument coming from the front of the store where the cash register is located. I didn't really rush out there or even look at the commotion because the owner was a bit of a wild card and it wasn't unlikely to see him go off on rude customers. I heard the man yell, never again, and then stormed out of the shop. The voice sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite place it at the time. After the angry man left, the owner walked into the kitchen where I was standing and looked at me with a smirk on his face. In his American-Italian accent, he said, Hey, Tony, the hell do you do that guy? He don't like you one bit. And I shrugged and told him I didn't see the guy. And then he proceeded to tell me, The guy saw you walk into the kitchen and said, I know the guy. He's bad, he's trouble, fire him. I told him I wasn't going to fire you, and he said I'd never order pizza here again or something. Eh. And we laughed about it for a couple of days, and then it passed. By the following weekend, I had forgotten all about it. We got an order to deliver somewhere that was just out of our zone, but he agreed to pay extra if we could please deliver it. I, of course, didn't mind and was happy to take the massive tip. I made the 30-minute drive to a mansion on the edge of town. This place was beautiful. The type of house I always wanted to live in. I approached the massive front doors that were accompanied by two giant pillars. I rang the doorbell and a voice came out from a speaker on the button and it said in a muffled voice, The door is open, my friend. Could you please just come in and set the pizza on the counter? I got a broken leg and I'm not moving too well. And the voice sounded familiar, but it was just muffled enough that I couldn't quite tell if I knew it for sure. Now I walked into the house and it was far less striking on the inside. It smelled horrible in there and it looked like it hadn't been clean in like years. There was trash everywhere, bottles and cans lined the floor and ants were all over the place. It was disgusting to say the least. I walked into the kitchen and found a spot on the counter to set the pizza box. I took one more look around at the disarray of the home. As I was turning my head I noticed a man standing in the doorway on the opposite side of the room. I barely recognized him at first, but after a second it was clear. It was my old mentor from my old job, and he didn't have a broken leg. He just stood there staring at me with one hand firmly concealed behind his back. I put my hands out in a defensive position and asked, Hey man, you okay? He took a half step forward and then stopped but didn't say anything. His eyes were wide and he looked like he was about to burst at the seams. I started to slowly back toward the front door which was probably like 20 feet away from where I was standing. As I slowly walked backward, never breaking eye contact, he finally spoke and said, It's your fault. I lost everything because of you. You turned me in. I tried to respond and tell him that I was fired too but I couldn't find the words. He still didn't move really other than a few small steps and he just kept saying, I blame you Tony. I blame you. I couldn't stop noticing the arm behind his back it was starting to shake and twitch and I knew he had something behind his back and I didn't want to find out what it was. I was about a foot away from the door and I grabbed the knob, turned and ran to my car. As I sprinted out of the house I could hear him moving much faster now but I didn't turn to see if he was chasing me. 
When I got to the bottom of the driveway, I turned and saw him standing at his front door, waving at me with this wicked smile on his face. I just got back to the shop and told everyone there what happened, and we all had a laugh about it at the time. I didn't really understand just how scary and severe that incident could have been until just a little while ago when I was talking to my girlfriend about my delivery job. She said I was lucky that he didn't try and attack me, and she claims that he probably wanted to but was so messed up on something at that moment that he couldn't move very well. After talking to her and remembering that look in his eye, I remember just how dark and dead those eyes looked when he stared at me. If anybody ever picks up a job delivering pizza to make ends meet, never go inside, because he may not be as lucky as I was to escape. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm EST, and there are some super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night that I think you should really join. Please join. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash letsreadofficial, or send it over email, and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, the pizza man wants your crust.